GPS devices are being used in business for delivery and repair calls. Games and scavenger hunts are being held as geocaching events, and even police departments use GPS devices to map crime patterns in communities. For information about GPS devices and crime mapping, contact the Criminal Justice Department at Northeast State. Today, computer technology and networking have taken on a whole new dimension. Keeping in touch with your friends is now easier than ever before. We follow, we tweet, or we're just friends. It is Twitter, MySpace, or Facebook that brings us together. Social networking has put us in touch with our friends 24-7, and we wonder if so much access is changing the nature of our relationships. Social media has become an important function in society. MySpace, YouTube, and Facebook are among the elite social media outlets. This media format has changed the way we think, act, and communicate. From a new way to meet people to new tools for advertising, the social media community is ever-growing. Direction Northeast spoke with speech communications professor Dr. Rick Merritt, as well as pop culture instructor Jim Kelly, both from Northeast State Community College, about these new technologies. To an extent, there is, it's interesting when you go out and you, if you're watching individuals go, going out to dinner or something like that, you will see one with their, their text messaging, they're checking their Facebook, uh, they're responding uh, on the, the written word more than talking with their, with the individual as far as uh, whom they're actually with uh, in a physical sense. So there may be that attachment to, I've got to be connected to my network 24-7 and I can't go without my, uh, without my phone. When we talk about those kind of things, we're talking about being immersed in information and it's around us all the time. Things like Facebook and Twitter, MySpace, uh, being able to pull out your cell phone and read the news or read, you know, watch a movie or something. Uh, it really has had a tremendous impact because now we are totally surrounded all the time, uh, 24 hours a day, by media. And, of course, that means pop culture. We were in a conference meeting a couple of weeks ago, and one of the I guess experiments that the person used was he had the person on your right or left take your phone and you swap phones with them. And you just kind of held on to it and he was talking about whatever he was talking about and, and we're sitting there holding this person's phone and the one I got was much nicer than mine so I thought it was a good deal. But he was holding that phone he's, and then that point says, says, at what point did that become uncomfortable for you? A, to have somebody else's phone and B, not have your own. And it was like five seconds for most people that you give up that, this connection that you have with the world. Um, one of the, the points that I make all the time, and I, I woke up one morning and realized that one of the things that changed in my lifetime, uh, I kind of have one foot kind of back in the day as people use that term and then we're in, in the era we live in today, is that when I was growing up, if I wanted to uh, find out about a movie or find out about a TV show or find out about some actor or something like that in pop culture, uh, I'd be sitting at home and I'd just say, well, can't do anything about it tonight. I'll just get up tomorrow morning and go to the library or maybe ask somebody about it. Today, somebody says, well, who starred in this movie back in 1934? I can pull out my cell phone or iPod or, you know, and find the answer in, in, in seconds. So the difference is, and the, and the difference that it's made in classes and it's made in the way we communicate and, and talk to each other is that we are constantly uh, being surrounded by information and, and that is both a, a wonderful thing and it's a challenge and it can be frustrating because we're not away from it ever. I mentioned poll, in, uh, poll everywhere and graffiti I'm definitely going to implement on a regular basis in the classroom. Uh, also use uh, Facebook to an extent uh, to set up meetings, to set up uh, interviews. I recently had an interview with a former student uh, just uh, a few days ago. He's uh, at ETSU doing some work in journalism and he, he sent me a message via Facebook, can I interview you uh, for this uh, particular topic and, and setting up uh, advising meetings and things like that and use Facebook to do that uh, quite a bit as well. People always are asking me, uh, what do you think about cell phones in class and what do you think about Facebook and stuff like that? And we have demonized these things and I use that term because um, 
a lot of people look upon cell phones and almost all the all the things of of, of social networking and social media, Twitter and things like that. Uh, anything that the student has immediate access to, uh, they want to ban it and say this should not be used. It's really you can't bring this into the classroom. Uh, I'm just the opposite. Um, I think that these types of ways of communicating and getting information uh, can either be looked upon as a negative thing or they can be used in a positive way to bring things like that into the classroom for educational purposes. I know for instance cell phones is a good example and I'm, uh, of that. I think that people want to participate in class using social media. I found two uh, pretty interesting uh, social media type uh, sites that I've just included in my class uh, last couple of weeks. One's called Wafiti. And in that, you can type in a text message, and it appears on a screen, and it's kind of bouncing around. And your message appears with a name that is given to you by the system, but it can be about anything. I used it in my debate class. While they were doing a debate and found the students that were listening, they were asking questions about what's happening with the debate, and it's appearing on the screen. And I think it's really cool to keep people engaged. And so I think that it can be used in the classroom to keep people engaged. Uh, the other is a poll, where in the middle of a PowerPoint, you may stop and say, well, what do you think of this? Give me your impressions on you know, yes or no, four, four choices or whatever, and they get to get on their phone and they will be able to uh, phone a message to this particular number and choose a selection. And so you have an on-screen on -screen poll right there that's happening live as they're doing it. And I think it's probably the first time, uh, at least in a number of years, I've ever heard students say something, hey, this is cool. And so I think that it, it's, it, it is impacting the classroom and it can impact the classroom on a positive basis. Regardless if it is MySpace or Facebook, there's little doubt that social media has affected the way we communicate. Society depends on the internet for research and information, and now communication. How will online communications continue to change our society? Only time will tell. For Direction Northeast, I'm Amber Langlois. I don't think like you. I don't laugh at the same jokes as you. I don't speak like you. I don't eat the food you do. I don't celebrate the same holidays as you. But I will help save your life. When you help the American Red Cross, you help America.